This week on Losers of Initiative. The approach of several riding, several horses uh, approaching, galloping, whatever. The noise that several horses make as they approach. Sorry, I, I do and en- would enjoy the noise some more. For sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Carry on. Greg, use that. <laughs> I'm gonna. All right. And yeah, they're approaching from the, from the north. Basically... Okay, so Kevin Legrand is outside, and he has just informed you that Garrett Stone is upstairs. So apparently, uh, Kevin was the figure you saw in the window, and he's the one that ran downstairs to to intercept you, having recognized you. And apparently, he was speaking with Garrett Stone. And Kevin Legrand apparently has spoken with him, to what extent you don't know. To what extent is Kevin Legrand involved in this? You don't know. All you know is that he's here. And he doesn't seem hostile. He doesn't even have a weapon on him. And he merely says, oh, Mr. Stone is upstairs. I believe he would uh, very much like to speak with you. So I've heard. They have us waiting for him to uh, rest some. Oh, that yep. was why I had to make my trip out to the outhouse. Ah, are your friends here as well, then? Yeah, they're inside. Oh. Well, if you would like to uh, rejoin them in the living room, uh, I will uh, go upstairs and speak with Mr. Stone. Uh, or you can accompany me, whichever you would like to do. Uh, so go up and speak with Mr. Stone. I do remember uh, encountering him in town, and it was quite clear that even though uh, Mr. Daughtry invited us to this estate that he was not fond of us that was made clear at the bar uh and isn't wouldn't it be daughtry that would be the one we need to speak to uh colonel daughtry is not here uh mr stone is his representative in the colonel's absence so he he's essentially the second hand man so to speak so to speak yes so if Mr. Daughtry's not here. Where is he? Uh, you you do actually actually make an observation check. Let's see if you notice the subtleness. Uh, well, my observation's fourteen, and I rolled a seven. Okay, so you actually do notice a moment of uh, worry or panic as he f- quickly thinks of something to say. As he says, uh, "The colonel, he is he is probably in town. That would make the most sense." <laughs> he. He frequently goes there. He just reassures himself. Yeah, that makes sense. That's what I... Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess... Can't... I, I, I suddenly need to poop again. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't wipe real well. I need to go back in. Getting, getting that real hot itch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess... I'll go ahead and go follow him up and... Yeah, let's, <clears throat> let's speak to Mr. Stone, I guess. Very well. I'm sure he will be anxious to speak with you. <laughs> I'm going to follow him into the house. All right. So, yeah, he goes in uh, into the kitchen area there. There's some swinging doors that lead into a dining room. And you can see off to your right as you're going through the dining room, heading toward a door uh, in the dining room across the way there. Uh, kind of as you're going through the dining room, looking to your right, there's a, just an open archway basically not a door in it that leads into the living room where you can see your friends sitting with all the other people um i need you guys in the living room grug and ovac to make observation checks uh mine is 12 and i rolled a six beat it by six I beat it by five okay. 16 and 11 so sitting in the living room you guys actually hear the door You've heard the kitchen door close, open and close a couple times. Uh, after this most recent time, you kind of look over into the gap, which you notice leads into a separate adjoining room, probably a dining room from what it looks like. Uh, but you see Zorosi and Kevin Legrand walking by. 
And as, as they do, Zerosi kind of stops for a half second and looks over at you guys. So you, you can you make kind of connect eyes. Do you want to make any gestures or yeah, anything? Yeah, I want to wave. Hi. <laughs> Grug is going to get a very confused look on his face. Um, and I'm behind Kevin LeGrand. Does it look like anybody else has paid any attention? Nope. Nope. You're just following behind Kevin LeGrand. Yeah. Essentially, I'm going to just motion that, you know, going upstairs. Like, they know that Mr. Stone's up there. So. Yeah. I'm going to give you a thumbs up. Uh, also, though, when we came in, I wanted to see, like, if I could see the pieces of whatever it sounded like broke. Did it look like the door was, like, trapped, so to speak? Just has it had a thing that would make noise? Correct. It, it looked like when you went through the door, you kind of looked at the top of the door, and it had, like, a little wooden... Obviously not a very effective wooden little pole sticking down to sort of brace the door from keeping it blowing open or something. But it was down, so when you opened it, it just snapped it. Obviously, it didn't alert any, but that that wasn't the, you know, it wasn't like a trigger or a trap or okay. something. It was just Zerosi, the magic user thief from D&D nerves, went, oh, sh-, you know, I, I, I just triggered a trap kind of thing, and you sprung back. But yeah. really, it was just a poor design door. Okay. Yeah, and I guess I'll continue following. Okie dokie. So you go across, uh, go go through the dining room, uh, open the door, and you're in like a study, sort of like a, you're still on the ground floor. You know, it's like a study, like a little library. There's a desk and everything. And in the study, there's there's another door, which geographically placed would probably lead back into the living room. But there's also a stairway that goes up. And this was how many stories for the building? Three. Three? Okay. And when I saw him before, he was up on the third floor? Correct. Okay. Uh, while we're in there, I'm actually going to mention, <clears throat> would would Mr. Stone only want to speak with one of us, or would he not want to speak with all three of us? Oh, I'm sure in due time he will speak with all of you, but uh, you shall do. Okay. As you know, he's you guys kind of exchange that as he's going up the stairs to the second floor, and you arrive on the second floor, go up the stairs, and there's like a kind of a nice fancy hallway on the second floor with several rooms, you know, several doorways leading into rooms, uh, and then kind of down the hallway just a little bit uh, is another stair stairway going up to the third floor, and he just kind of heads straight for that. Uh, are any of the doors open or anything? All closed. Yep. And in typical ranch, you know, ranch style, ranch house style, there are tons of windows. So, you know, in this hallway that you're in, it's kind of on the edge. And there's, you can see actually several windows, three large windows uh, on, on one side that you kind of walk by as you go up the stairs to the third floor. Do I notice anything special? Because obviously I'm going to be looking around. Um, it's real fancy. Okay, but not none of the doors seem like maybe different than the others or I guess and then out the window um, are these facing the barn that okay no the windows the windows that you're passing by on the second floor hall there uh, face the opposite side from the barn Uh, and all the doors are closed they all look pretty much the same they're nice looking they're fancy fancy doors but they all look the same all closed Uh, the hall that you're, like, that you're going through, you know, lots of plants and pictures. It's really nice, you know, carpeted. Very nice. Okay. And you head up to the third floor. Uh, the third floor uh, consists of another much, much less grandiose hall. It's more like a just a, a hallway, typical hallway, uh, running the length of the house down the middle. And on one side, there's just a single door, which on the other side of that door would lead to the room that would be with the window overlooking the outhouse and, yeah. the, and the barn. Uh, on the other side of the hall, there are two doors. Uh, kind of separate, obviously, leading into two separate rooms. And Kevin Legrand, you know, goes up there. Um, make an observation check. Oh, my observation is a 14. I rolled a 17. That is a fail. All right. So you go... He, Kevin Legrand just basically goes to the single door on, on the one side... You know, the door on the by itself side of the hallway uh, opens it up and revealing a very nice room. Uh, The smell of like medicine, like a hospital type smell 
kind of emanates from this room uh, as he opens it up. And it's a very nice bedroom, king-size bed, um, dresser, all fancy stuff, several large windows, obviously, you know, curtain, large curtain windows, obviously. One of them is the one that looks, that was looking down on the outhouse when you came out. Uh, And you notice standing and speaking with another person, another man, standing and bandaged is Garrett Stone. And he's talking with another guy who's in the room that you do not recognize. Uh, And Kevin Legrand opens the door, walks in, and you kind of reluctantly or slowly as you're observing everything are in the doorway. Yeah. uh, The guy that he's talking to, do I know that, like, does he look like he's wearing just kind of similar stuff to the other ranch hands, the the guards and stuff, or is he dressed a little nicer or just anything noticeable about that? No, he looks just like another ranch hand. And do I hear uh, they were talking as we entered? Um, anything about what uh, they were You hear that their conversation is quickly stopped as soon as you guys walk in. Uh, but you did manage to hear this, the, the phrase, they'll be coming from the north pretty soon. Okay, and then the north was the direction of... Promise City. Uh, so maybe they're expecting that the people from the fort. Fort Griffin. Soldiers. That's the word I was looking uh, for. Gotcha. <laughs> Soldiers. Or the chemicals. That too. That too. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess I'm going to enter in. Do they say like anything? When I, I'm not going to say anything when I first walk in. So you guys walk in. Garrett Stone and, and the guy stop talking and look over to you. Garrett Stone looks pissed. He's got just this... But then again, he has just that look about him. He's always looks like he's really angry, really serious, you know. Happy birthday, here's a cupcake, and he's frowning and <laughs> scowling and just, thank you. But uh, he's that kind of guy. But yeah, he looks really angry, doesn't say anything, kind of gets a little squinty-eyed. Uh, and Kevin Legrand is the first to speak up, and he says, uh, Monsieur Stone, uh, this is you in France. I believe you uh, are acquainted uh, if you will excuse me, I will go back downstairs and attend to our other guests. Oh, my. And he closes the door, leaving you and Garrett Stone and the stranger in the room. Garrett Stone still says nothing, kind of almost as if he is waiting for you to say something. Okay. He, he does have his sidearm on, but he hasn't, you know, he's not, like, getting ready to get it or anything. He's just casually staring at you very, but very angrily. Clearly. And the other guy... The other guy looks confused. He's like, uh, actually, make an observation roll. This is the one. This is the die that won the first one. So it's going to roll a natural 20 this time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you have no idea. Yeah, he's he looks, uh, apparently he looks kind of confused uh, or worried or something. Perfect. But, right. He's like looking at Garrett Stone, looking at you, looking at Garrett Stone, looking at you. Okay. And they still say nothing. Um, I guess I will start. <laughs> Howdy, y'all. <laughs> start start this ball rolling. Yeah. Well, it's interesting finding you out here. We came out looking for Daughtry after he invited us to the, the estate. Daughtry don't know nothing. Daughtry's a fool. Well, we come out looking for information, maybe work for... Whatever it is you guys are doing, I was not expecting to encounter you guys prior to making it out to here. <laughs> and he just, almost like he's ignoring what you, you're saying, he just kind of interrupts you as you finish up your statement. with, And he says, you know, you got zero chance of leaving here alive, boy. Okay, and this window is looking out towards the barn. There are, in this room, there are four large windows. Three of them are on the side of the house that is facing the bar, or facing the uh, outhouse. And one of them is on the side of the house that is facing the barn. Well, I am not going to try and be the one to escalate that right away while I'm all alone However, on the third floor. Yeah, that's, that's probably wise. I will, I will describe the room uh, dimensions to you. Uh, the room is huge. This is obviously the main third floor room because it is 15 foot by 30 foot rectangular room. It's almost like it's a, a large living room on the third floor converted into a bedroom 
But that hospital smell, you know, as you're kind of looking around also, you start noticing the little details of the room. Obviously, this is where Garrett Stone was treated and he was kept for, you know, the last day and a half or two days since the church shootout. Because there are, you know, there are several needles, you know, and uh, medical supplies uh, about the table and the end of the bed area. But yeah, you notice that this is not just a, a simple bedroom, but probably where he's been for a while, the last couple days, healing up. Yeah. Well, now, why do we got to jump straight to threats to each other? Uh, we came out here looking for work, and I think we've proved pretty well that we're pretty good in a fight. You could use guys like us. All right, make your bluff convince check. Well, my bluff convince is 12, and I rolled a 10. So I beat it, but only by two. Right, and he doesn't like you. Yep. So, um, so Garrett, after you say that, you know, you basically offer your services instead of as a ranch hand, more of as like a, a fighting ranch hand kind of thing, uh, which apparently he's into that kind of stuff from your experience with him. Uh, he kind of gives it a pause and a thought. Says, come to think of it. You can prove yourself here in, uh, in a little while. We'll see how it turns out. And if you do a good job, maybe I will hire you. I believe I'm pretty capable of proving myself. He still doesn't look very happy. I um, figure he he's would very be. angry. <laughs> the, the person with him who still has basically to s- yet to say anything is still kind of like, like, a, like a confused, worried look on him. Um, he, he actually speaks up at this point and says... Oh, now, now, Mr. Stone, I don't know if it would be a good idea to start bringing in unknown factors into the fight that's about to come up. And Garrett Stone looks back at that guy and says, You just let me worry about that, Roy. You just head on back downstairs and get the boys ready. I'm going to have a little words here. Actually, no, as a matter of fact, no. Why don't you just take, Roy, why don't you just take this Ewan fella downstairs with you? You just uh, let them know what uh, what's to be expected in the next little bit, and uh, I'll go. I'll go ahead and do what I need to do to get ready up here. And Roy, apparently his name is Roy, just sort of defeatedly nods his head and gestures to you, Zerosi, to go out the door, and he's following you. All right. Well, I'm not going to say anything. I'll just go ahead and do that. And- as we're going down, though, I'm, I want to ask him about this fight. Okay. So, there's a fight coming. What, what are we expecting to be against? Them soldiers up at the fort. They're sending a, a posse down here to shoot up the place. Apparently, they believe that there's some wrongdoings going on. And we're about to, we're about to defend our honor. This sounds like a guy who has no idea that there's actually wrongdoings going on. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you go back downstairs to the living room, through the hall on the second floor, through the study, open the door, sure enough, leads into the living room, uh, and where you see everybody sitting there. There are now five ranch hands, I guess you'd say, but you also see Krug and Ovac there as well, still sitting there where they were when, they, when you walked by and waved at them. Uh, Grug say, hey, Zerosi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you see uh, Zerosi walk in with another ranch hand guy with him. And when he comes into the room, this Roy character, uh, he speaks up. He says, all right, boys, y'all know there's trouble coming, so here's what we're going to do. And he starts you know, saying their names and telling them where to go. Uh, and when he looks at Grug and Ovac, when he looks at you two, he kind of goes, you know, I'll take it you're friends with this fella here. And he points at Zerosi. Grug is. Grug is. No, 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 no. Well, here's what I need you all boys to do. I need you to go out to the barn. I need you to hold that barn. Go, 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 go. And, uh... Grug confused. Uh, wh- wh- is the barn going somewhere? When when he says that, <laughs> when he's... Well, obviously, he's, you know, he's, he's ex- instructing these people, these other ranch hands, where to go to defend, because there's a fight coming, mm-hmm. apparently. Oh, okay. Uh, and he instructs you three to just go out on your own to the barn, separate from the ranch house. 
which seems odd to you. It does seem odd. Uh, I need you both to make an observation check. Actually, all three of you. I failed it again. Uh, beat mine by two. Uh, beat mine by 15. Okay, so both of you, o- Ovac and Grug, you notice that this guy... After he tells you that, and everybody's kind of looking at each other confused, he looks quickly looks back at you and winks. Oh, hey. Hey, we got a friend. Grug say, Roger that. Grug love Barnes. <laughs> He's going to stand up and start walking out all proud. And I just slap my biceps and walk out. All right, y'all, y'all be sure to hold that barn at all costs. Grug loves Barnes. <laughs> all right. So everybody starts getting in their position. All three of you go out to the barn? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as you're walking out to the barn, you see, you kind of glance up at the, to, the roof, to the, the roof of the barn to see if the guy is still there. And sure enough, he kind of peeked like as you're about halfway there after the other ranch hands are all busy getting in positions and everything and they're not with you. You see him kind of peek over, kind of do a shrug real quick and then get back down below. Did it seem pretty clear that these guys didn't know they were out there while we were in there? Yeah, there the was whole time. the discussion was was you know pretty ranch hand guy discussion right. stuff. Like they're talking about an attack coming, but they're not talking about someone already being here. Correct. for the attack. Okay, just make it sure. But yeah, you guys, you know, when when Kevin Legrand closed was on the third floor and he closed the door to go away, he he wasn't downstairs when you guys went back downstairs. Right. So, and you guys never, and Grug and Ovac, you guys didn't see him at all. We, okay. we saw him, but we didn't. Well, you saw him walking through the right. dining room. Right. So we Zorzia. know he's there, but we Correct. don't know. But you didn't see him come down or anything right. like that. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, you guys get to the barn, and sure enough, it's just like you left it. It's big and void of people. Just you three. Let's climb up to the roof, and we can let this guy know what we found out. I'm going to stay on the rafters again. He didn't like that last time. Yeah, but this time I feel like it would be more important I keep an eye out below. Okay. With everyone being dispersed around. Right, 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 right. And and he'll be more understanding this time because we already talked to him, hopefully. So. Yeah, I'm I'm going to come with. Climb on up. Okay, so you two go, uh, Ovac and Zerosi go up onto the roof of the barn. Grug stays in the the loft, uh, the second floor of the barn, but it's all open so you can see down into the barn. Right. Okay. Uh, when we go up there, I'm gonna just let them know. So they think that that we're here to help and tasked us with defending the barn. They know an attack is coming and they're pre- they're prepping for it. They they say that there's soldiers coming from the north and they're ready for them. Well, how did they find out? Did they see us? It does not seem that they know that you guys here are already here. We don't. I don't know how they know about the soldiers coming from the fort. Damn it. Damn it. Well, looks like a fight's unavoidable then. I was kind of hoping that the, when the captain got here, he d- he would defuse the situation. But if they're ready to fight, then I guess there's going to be a fight. What do you boys plan on doing? I can't really justify putting yourselves at risk here. You're not you're not involved in this fight. So I know you say uh you don't expect us to join in on this fight, but what is it that's that is bringing all these troops on this location to start with? Apparently, there's been some sort of uh, connection between the kidnapping of that little boy in town and this ranch house. They believe that Colonel Daughtry and his and his ranch hands are somehow involved, and we were just gathering information. That seems likely. That's what brought us out here, too. And we did discover that that boy's father's in there as well. But he's here by his own will. Uh, well, that don't make no sense. Does It, it doesn't make sense to us either, but... Is the, it, bo- is the little boy in there? We did not see the boy. Well, regardless, we are here to help, and we're going to see this out. Well, I ain't going to decline your assistance, but I, I would highly recommend you take more caution. Uh, and don't, don't, don't be running out and getting yourself killed. I, that, that'd be on my shoulders. Well, they expect us just to hold this barn, so on both sides of the table, we're expected to not leave this area. So I think we'll be fine there. Are we going to tell them about the little wink? 
No, because I don't think that's relevant. Uh, what if he shoots it? No, because he's just taking information. He's not here to shoot anybody. What if and, it's a, like implant and he didn't though? Know like, what if he didn't know there was somebody inside? Right. Maybe this private doesn't know that there's an undercover person. If that's what that person is. Yeah. But the undercover person knows that he's being watched, so they know people out there. Yeah. I was just gonna either say, that or the wink was to throw us off, and he's actually a bad guy pretending to be a good guy, sending us out here, and now we're all together so we can be killed at once. Because there's a bomb underneath the barn that we don't know about that's gonna blow up and kill us all. Boom. So we're just gonna post up. In whatever way we happen to end up. So, are you guys staying on top of the on the roof there on the flat flat roof of the Spanish style barn? If there was any confusion of the barn's image in your head, it's not one of those big arched roof barns. It's a flat roof. I'm gonna stay up because distance is my yeah. friend. Okay, with your rifle out. Yeah, I'm gonna ready my rifle. All right. So time goes by. Tick, 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 tick. I think we should take turns kind of dozing at times because we haven't slept in like two days. That's fair. We rode through the night. I was sleeping here. in the living room the whole time you were upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was only about 20 minutes. That's all he needs. Power yeah. nap. <laughs> Power bag. Yeah, about, about two or three hours go by. Um, actually, we're just going to say time goes by till it's about sunset. Okay? okay. It's, it's about sunset. And... You hear the approach of several horses uh, approaching, galloping, whatever. The noise that several horses make as they approach. Sorry, I, I do and en- would enjoy the noise some more. First sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Carry on. Greg, use that. <laughs> no, I'm gonna. All right, and yeah, they're approaching from the from the north. Basically, the barns on the west side, the houses on the east side. They're approaching from the north. So as the as the the horses are getting closer, you notice that the the men on the roof, the soldiers on the roof, are sort of getting anxious. They're getting their rifles, making sure they're loaded. You know, getting all like "here it comes" kind of stuff. I'll do the same. Okay, you make sure your rifle is fully loaded. Yeah. All right. So um, the horses are approaching. They get uh, they're about a quarter of a mile away, and you can actually see them. Ooh. Uh, Sorry to interrupt, but I want to actually be, I want to, like, see the windows and stuff, and if I see somebody lean out with a gun, I might, like, if if they're going to fire at the horses, we should just fire at them right in the house while they're not looking at us. After they shoot. But, (laughs) that's a good call. So the horses are about a quarter mile well, everybody's getting all jittery, and that is when you actually hear a gunshot. Is it Zerosi? No. <laughs> <laughs> the hear, one who really got Jerry. Uh, you hear a gunshot, and you, you kind of look toward the ranch house, and you see that several other pop, pop, pop gunshots go off. And you see that there are four ranch hands on the roof of the ranch house. And they, are, they have begun a firefight with the two soldiers that were hiding up there. Mm. And the soldier on the roof of the barn... Immediately, you know, some uh, profanities are jutted out from his mouth as he, instead of aiming down at the sort of ground floor of the ranch house to shoot people, he raises his rifle up and shoots across the way at the ranch hands fighting his buddies on the roof of the ranch house. So do you shoot at the ranch hands on the roof? Do you just keep aiming and being ready for anything that's happening at the windows or the ground floor? How far away are the horses now? A little less than a quarter of a mile, galloping. I'm actually going to move away from the edge, like, so that no one can see. Like, if I start shooting at the ranch hands on the roof, I don't want anyone below to, to see, see that I'm shooting at gotcha. them as well. Okay. So I want to move away, and then I'll shoot. Okay. Seeing him do that, I'm going to do the same. All right. And, and I, then after you shoot, you kind of go prone and get ready for the next load. Round, yeah. yeah. Duck and load. Just stand up and shoot. Grug is going to ready his bow and arrow. Okay. In case someone comes in there. Gotcha. From gotcha. below us. So 14 for careful, and I rolled a 12. So that's a hit. Okay. Yeah, okay, I rolled a 17. And I have a rifle skill, so that's an 18. Hey. 18 is chest. So I do two damage. And I am also taking careful shot, which careful shot for me is 16, and I rolled a 16. That's a miss because of uh, 
Oh, wait, no. What's your rifle's range? Uh, my rifle's range is 30, 100, and 400. So he is in the second. He is more than the 30 away, so... Okay, so not counting range. Need a 16. If they're in that 50 to 70, that would be minus 2, correct? So I need a 14, and I rolled a 16. All right. That is a miss. And then ducking down. All right. The horses, they're, they're going to be about four more rounds b- out before they start shooting. Uh, you hear several windows breaking, not from being shot out, but from being knocked out by people inside. Okay, so what? how we're going to do this is I'm going to let uh, the exchange happen between the rooftops, back and forth, barn and ranch house rooftops, separate from... The, the the ranch house and the horse riders. You notice that uh, when you looked at the the horses coming, that there was about twenty or so. You know, around around twenty riders. So let's go ahead and just start up an initiative back and forth with the people on the roofs. The number to beat is twenty four. I got nineteen. Yeah, uh, not even close. Fifteen. All right. So there are. Several men on the roof. Uh, their main focus is dispatching the two soldiers that are up there. So they're actually not even going to be shooting at you guys until they take care of those guys. And they just took care of those guys. <laughs> so actually, I don't need to see. Yeah. So they got they kind of got the jump on those soldiers in that first round, and the soldiers were you know wheeling around to shoot. But yeah, they got they got quickly over overwhelmed and outgunned. Because there's what four. You said? Four on the roof. Yeah, four ranch hands on the roof and two soldiers. But now there are four ranch hands on the roof and no soldiers. Are any of these guys Roy? No. Didn't figure, but still ask. Are we trying to keep him alive? One man winks at us and you're going to risk your life for him? I just wanted to know if it was uh, Roy. I mean, those pearly blues. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna reload this round. Okay, so you're reloading your rifle. I'll fire at the guy that he hit last round. Okay. And I need a 14, and I rolled a natural 20. All right. So, and then the private on the roof with you guys. He shoots, and he misses. All right. So, we've got another round coming up here. Go ahead and roll your initiative, boys. The number to beat. Ooh. The number to beat is 13. I add 16, so. 21. So, you guys go first. And what did the private get? Oh, he got a 29. So, you all three get to go again. Ah, that's a miss. Careful shot is 14, and I rolled a 14. Ah, because of your range penalty, that is a miss. And I rolled a 15. Oh, that's a near miss. And then the private shoots, and he misses with a 17. Pew, 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 pew. Thank God I'm hiding down here. Yeah, Grug, you're like, (sighs) (laughs) I I can just hear them missing. Yeah. (laughs) So the four guys on the uh, on the opposing roof are shooting at the private, Ovac, Ovac, and Zerosi. So the private, Ovac, Ovac, and Zerosi. Zerosi was missed. Which I'm laying down. Doesn't that give me something? No, you got hit. You, oh. They shot at you while you were shooting at them. Tricky bastards. Uh, so Ovac was hit twice in the right leg and left leg. So both misses. They hit the. <laughs> they're yeah, hitting okay, the, the, say, the jutting like, the jutting up ledge that you're kind of behind. Yeah, the shots are would have hit you, but hit that instead. Gotcha. And then they hit the pri. Uh oh, they hit the private in the chest. Oh, yeah, and he falls. Lights out. The square like base of the neck, top of the chest. One shot, he just tracheotomy crum- crumples to the ground, instantly killed. So we're gonna go ahead and roll initiative now. This is round four. The number number to beat is sixteen. Well, I add that and then roll to seventeen. All right, so Zerosi goes first. There are four men on the roof. One of them is wounded. Okay, firing at the wounded one. I need a fourteen or less, and I rolled an eleven. That's a hit. And location, location. I rolled a twenty. Head. And I also get a wound modifier of plus one, so twenty one. No, that the wound modifier is on your next roll. Oh. There Six. you go. Seven. Oh, no. So, Max yeah. Damage. He, the guy that was already wounded, you just hit him in between the eyes and took him out. Head, head Mortal instant kill headshot. And it's their turn. So there's three of them. 
And they are shooting at Zerosi, Zerosi, and Ovac. So Ovac is the black one. All right, so three shots. Come here, come here, come here. Ovac was hit again, and Zerosi was missed twice. Even though I was laying down, reloading. Oh, so I guess they all three shot at Zerosi. Yeah, because you, you're, when you're not shooting, you're not even up at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'd be man. down reloading the whole time. Yep. So. so the three of them all shoot at Zerosi. Sorry, Zerosi. And one of them hits. So location. Diddly 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 diddly. One. That's a left leg. <laughs> that is a miss. So it hits the, once again, hit, hitting the, the roof area structure. All right, so that was the end of the round. So now we are on round five, and now the horsemen are starting to engage down below with the ranch hands as shots are being fired. So, Grug, you're in the loft of the of the barn, and you can hear all the shooting just starting to escalate, like a few shots and then a few more shots from your buddies on the roof, and now, like, dozens of gunfires and shots. Which I know I stand no chance in, so I'm going to stay here. Okay. Which the only one we talked to is now dead. I mean, that's why are you giving me that look? <laughs> they shot him. You let him were, die. Were you gonna just <laughs> yeah, say? Yeah, why'd you let him die? <laughs> we really should have kept him alive. Mm -hmm. Because now they're gonna be like ranch hands. You killed him, and we're like, how no, we're we not have, ranch hands. How would we have kept him alive when he got and shot at the like, base of his neck? Tell him not to engage. Oh, right, because he would have done that. And now they're gonna be like, oh, a Native American. He yeah. killed everybody. All right. Uh, initiative. Yep. They got a tw the number to beat is twenty. Okay. Well, I got much higher than that. I got a twenty-eight. All right. So you guys go ahead. There's three of them over there. Go ahead. I need a fourteen or less. I rolled a natural twenty again. I rolled a six, needing fourteen or less. That is a fifteen. Sixteen, technically, because I can move that up or down one. Oh, for hit location? Yeah. Sixteen. That is chest. That is a hit. And then five damage. Before modifiers. Yeah, before that. That takes him out. Kaboom! And he just goes flying backwards. Okay, uh, we are on to their shots. And they're both shooting at uh, OVAC this time. Uh-oh. That is a 19 and an 18. That is both misses. Hooray! We are on to the next round. It will be round Six, which is a reload round for Ovac. For me, so I'm laying down. The number to beat is a 14. Well, I got 19 on my dice, so that's a 35. Okay. <laughs> so Ovac ducks down, reloads. Uh, and I'm firing. And you... Needing 14 or less. Hey, I got a 9. And now for hit location... 19. <laughs> that <laughs> is a head hit. <laughs> Oh, you guys are uh, two, but I also add one for my weapon. Not a not a mortal wound. Okay, so, but it was a head hit, which greatly impacts his chance to do anything. This shot round. his ear off. <laughs> All right, so they are shooting both at Zerosi. Yeah, I'm the only target. That's correct. Oh my, both misses. Initiative. So, wow. All right, so this is round seven coming up. Let's go ahead and roll initiative. The fight is still raging down below. 27. 19. 22. All right, so I'm going to shoot. Kapow! Uh, I want low, right? Yeah, yep. you do. Yeah, okay, I roll the one. That's, so. a, that's a great hit. And you're actually shooting at the one that was wounded. And then I roll the 15, so 16. Ch another chest hit. Every All three hits have been in the chest, by the way. From and four damage. That does him in because he didn't have much after after the headshot. After shot. the headshot, yeah. Because with your modifiers, that's going to drop him. So, that's boom! Ah. Another one down. Is how many are left up there still? One, just one. One, and he shoots it. He shoots at Zerosi. Sixteen, which surprisingly is the lowest I've rolled in like the last six rolls. <sighs> I got a three, so that's a hit. Location. I got a 12. Nope. Hits the roof. Oh, okay. <sighs> How right. much damage do you do to the roof? <laughs> Could, uh, the house collapses. Three damage. <laughs> three damage to the roof. Roof falls off. All right. Round eight. 
Initiative number to beat is 25. I got a 29. Okay. It doesn't matter. I'm reloading, so I'm just laying down on my stomach. Oh, and I got a 15. I that's, needed 14. That's a miss. So he shoots again. Round eight. I rolled a 10. And he needs a nine. <laughs> nice. All right. New round. I think, I think it's round nine now. All right. <laughs> These are the worst guys ever. Okay, round nine. Oops, that's the wrong die. Uh, number to beat is 25. All right, I rolled a 19. I got 35. Okay, so it's a Rossi. And I rolled a three, so that's a hit. And for location, ah, oh, six. That is an arm, which is a hit. Go ahead and roll your damage. Uh, two plus one, so three. Okay, much less damaging than the head hit. All right, so he can shoot at either one of you, and he's shooting at Ovac. Ooh. Kapow! 12, that's a miss. <laughs> I thought this was going to be hard. <laughs> it's, just gonna, gonna, it's just going to be I'm slow. I'm going to shoot. That is a 13, so that's a miss. Hi, right, how's that feel, huh? <laughs> okay, so we are on to round number 10. And that's initiative. The number to beat is 18. I'm laying okay, down. I reloading. got a 25. Okay, so you get to shoot. And I rolled a 6, so that's a hit. And for location, 10. That is a shoulder. That's a hit. Four, so five. Oh, that's that's a serious wound to his shoulder. So he, he cranks off a shot, but it's probably going to be yeah, a horrible miss. That was his 10th shot. Same. And it was a horrible miss. Uh, and he's, he's, he's badly wounded. So uh, we're going to go ahead and roll initiative for round number 11. 11. Uh, the number to beat is 20. Okay, I got a 28. I got an 18. Okay. So, so I'm going to shoot at him again. And I rolled a 9, so that's a hit. Okay. And location, I rolled a 1. That's a leg, which is not a hit. Uh, you notice that he is not firing. He is running back. Actually, he's down now. He, he doesn't shoot. He moves and he goes down onto the floor as if he is going to go back down into the ranch house, perhaps, or something. Okay. I'm going to move far enough to where I can see basically the next person to shoot at within the house. Like if it's the third floor or the second floor. So you're inching forward kind of as as you're getting closer, more of the ranch house is being revealed, so you're inching forward, scanning the ranch house until you can see somebody to shoot. Yeah, that's shooting at the, the horses. Alright, make an observation check. If you succeed, you can shoot this round. Observation is 16. I rolled a 15. Ah, so you actually kind of inch your way up and you see somebody on the third floor firing down at the uh, the horsemen, who are now, some of them are off their horses, some of them are still on their horses, they're assaulting, you know, some of them are actually, like, going in and fighting inside the ranch house. Some of the soldiers have moved in. and Gotcha. It's pretty intense down there. Okay, so I'm going to shoot at this gentleman on the third floor. Uh, I rolled a 6, needing a 14. That is a total hit. I rolled a 10. That is a right shoulder, which is not a hit, because though he's leaning out yep. the window with his left. So okay. you do hit the window ledge, though, right by him. Like, <laughs> fragments of it. Kinda. Scares him a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah. He's like, oh, shit, somebody's shooting at me from over there. From a quick scan of the fight down there, it looks like the soldiers are getting the best of the ranch hands. Because okay. they're actually, you know, moving into the house. The guys on horses are shooting. Um, Zerosi, what are you doing? I'm going to come up, just actually come up to the edge. Okay. Where I can see what's happening. Get the big picture. Yeah. Hey, what are you doing, Ovac? Staying still hidden where you can only really see the third floor? Yeah, I don't want to get too much fire. Well, like Zerosi's a... walking up past you toward the edge. <laughs> yep, then they can shoot him. I'm <laughs> still just going to be hanging All right, out. So let's go ahead and roll initiatives. 14. 19. 21. All right, so they're going to go first. So, yeah, there's actually a shot. It misses. It you know hits the roof or whatever. A shot coming from down below at, at, the, at you guys at the roof of the barn. Okay. Did I see? Uh, you're pretty sure it was one of the horse riders, one of the soldiers on horseback. Okay. Um, Weekend of Bernie's. Oh no! <laughs> so pick up, pick up the soldier. I should have put on his hat. Don't shoot at them; they're friendly. So it's your turn, guys. Um, do I see any ranch hands that I can shoot at? 
All right, go ahead and make an observation check since you're scanning around. Uh, f- 14 and I rolled a 12. So, yeah, as you're scanning around looking for potential targets, uh, you actually notice the sheriff is on horseback riding around. And he's, like, yelling out orders. He's got his pistol out, kind of raised up, and he's yelling out orders at the soldiers. Ovex about to wave. Get ready for it. <laughs> Hi, sheriff! <laughs> um... I mean, last time you saw the sheriff was the night of the mob and the, you know, and the shooting and the sneaking around in Promise City. You saw the sheriff darting out of town on a horseback because you guys saw him on the on the on the patio of the of the saloon. Oh, okay. So talking to the crowd, and then you and then Zorosi left, and the next you next time you saw him, he was riding out of town on a horse, getting away real quick. In the direction of the fort. In the direction of the fort. Uh, does it seem like he would be within earshot? Like yeah. Oh, yeah. He's he's probably 60 or 70 feet away from you down on the ground there. So I'll get his attention. And Sheriff Brown, we got you covered from over here. We know there's at least eight or nine inside, and Mr. Stone's up on the third floor. So, yeah, you, you start yelling, Sheriff, and... You, you kind of wait for him to acknowledge you before you start saying the whole thing. He kind of look. He looks over and very surprised, very surprised to see you. He doesn't see anybody else. He doesn't see Grug or Ovac up there at all. He just sees you standing there. The the other soldiers, apparently some of those so- soldiers on horseback were shooting at you. They they stop shooting at you when they see you talking with the sheriff. So obviously, you've you've. At least waiting to see what he has to say. Correct, correct. And the sheriff says, where's your friends? They're up here with me. One's watching the inside in case any of those ranch hands come in. Well, if there ain't any in there, I need your ass down here right now and help out. They're going to be harder to get out of there than a Alabama tick. Do not me. I'm actually really good in close quarters, and so are you. Yeah, yeah. so I wouldn't stay up here with my rifle. All right. So, yeah, I'm going to call down that all that I'll be right there, and I'm going to head down, switch into my revolver, and I'm going to get Grug at the same time because we're the two that are best in close quarters, leaving Ovac behind. All right, so making your way down. Grug, you see Zerosi coming down from the roof and onto the loft. Do you go with him all the way down? He's, he's like, come on, we're going down. I hope yeah, sure. as soon as he says something, yeah. Grug follows Zerosi. I mean, the typical. I mean, Yep, okay. So you guys get down to the ground floor, start going out of the barn. And the, f- the fighting is raging. Uh, several several of the regular soldiers who have not seen you guys before kind of take a double glance and a, and a and then a quick look at the sheriff also after that when they see Grug coming out of the barn. Like, is he on our side? <laughs> One of those things. All right, so the fighting is going very well. It's quickly becoming a rout. Um, you hear gunshots and stuff, and there are no... When you're on the ground floor heading toward the ranch house, you see that there are no more ranch hands at any of the windows. All the gunshots are coming from inside the house. Nobody even outside is shooting anymore. I want to, in our, if we're going to actually approach the house, I want to go to where, like, is there a bunch of soldiers all around the entire, like, do they have it well surrounded? Uh, there's only about five or six soldiers riding around on horseback around the house, kind of continually moving around the house. Except uh, the sheriff, who's just kind of stationary. stationary in between the barn and the ranch house, which is where you are. Okay. So are we going to go into the building, then? Grug follows a rose. I would like to shoot Mr. Stone. Grug would also. Yeah, I'll follow you in there. I don't care. Okay. All right. So you guys start making your way to the to go, to go into the house through the, through the front yeah. door, basically, because that's the closest door. Uh, and the sheriff kind of looks down at you. Be careful. We don't know how many of them are in there still. Uh, and right after he says that, you hear a very low pitch but very loud noise, like a, a almost like a roar, I guess would be the best way to explain. Like, Aah! does it sound like a giant? It does. It does sound like a giant. Very w- coming from inside the house on the third floor. And everybody, all the horse guys that are riding around, uh, they all stop and stare. And the sheriff kind of stops. He was about to say something, but he stops and looks at the third floor. Or, what the hell? And from the, the third floor window, 
from the room that you were in with Garrett Stone and Roy and that Kevin Legrand thing, from that window, a soldier's body comes flying out of the window, also taking some of the wall around the window with him. And he comes fl- and he flies almost all the way to the barn before he hits the ground. All right, I'm much less inclined to go inside now. <laughs> <laughs> and, sh- and the sheriff's like, expletive, expletive, expletive. What is that? Being on the roof of the barn still. Uh huh. Can I? So see? you s- you look into that hole that was just created from the soldier's body being yeah. shot out, and you catch a glimpse of what looks like an ogre or a giant or something. Just huge, huge, huge sized humanoid for just a second moves back into the house. Like through the hole after the, you know, soldier comes flying out, debris comes falling, you see a figure dart ju- across. Just, just move deeper into the house and through the door. I'm going to tell these two. Guys, there's a, there's a giant. It looks like a giant in there. Be careful. And then whatever everyone else hears is just gibberish. Right. Grug ready. He's going to crack his knuckles. <laughs> no, I'd have to set my bow down. I'm going to set my bow down to crack my knuckles. Set your then, bow. And then pit my are, bow back up. Your bow, bow in hand or tomahawk in hand? Bow in hand. Bow. Going up to the door would be bow in hand. Okay. And then once we get inside, I'll take tomahawk. Okay? Gotcha. All right. Zerosi? Can't we just wait for him to come out? <laughs> Zerosi's like, I don't want to go inside. Grug confused. Zerosi not want to go inside? Not anymore. Zerosi not want to fight? Save world? No, save world. Just on better terms. Grug's going to run in there. All right. So. Zerosi follow Grug. So, <laughs> are you. So, are you. Since you're going in the house, are you going to put your bow tomahawk. down? Yep. Tomahawk. As I'm running into the house, I'll put my bow away and take out my tomahawk. Nice. And I'll follow him. Okay. Hesitantly, you kind of like uh, grunt and then move in. All right. So, Grug. Right as you go in the front door, that enters into the living room where the you know where you were sitting for so long. There was a door to the study and an opening leading into the dining room. The door to the study is 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 gone, so it's been kicked open or you know whatever. Uh, there are several ranch hand bodies lying around and a couple a couple soldiers, but it looks like it's been a one sided fight for the most part. Uh, ranch hands getting the worst of it. The door to the study is gone, and so you can kind of see, because right inside that is the stairs that lead up to the second floor. And you hear several panicked voices shouting from upstairs. You know, Do like, I see any of them? Like, what? what is that thing? I don't know. Get out. Back out. Back out. We got to get out of here. Do I see any of the soldiers? Are they all upstairs? They're all upstairs. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to make my way upstairs then. So you kind of go around into the study and then start going up the stairs, tomahawk yep. out. Are yep. you going, like, fast? Or are you going, like, sneaky? Uh, fast at first. Fast at first. Okay. So you get about halfway up the stairs. Zerosi, you're just in uh, sh- shortly behind him. Okay. Yeah, you're at the bottom. I of look s- back. He's like peeking around the front door <laughs> as I'm you're- like halfway up the stairs. J- just like the pist- you see the pistol yeah. in like one you're eye. You're like lure him back down <laughs> and then I'll shoot him. I don't want to go up there. All right. So, uh, Grog, you're about halfway up the stairs. Zerosi, you're at the bottom of the stairs still. And four of the soldiers come just barreling from upstairs come barreling down running down the stairs and they're yelling at you as uh, you know they see you and they're s- startled cuz they you're an indian and normally they you're you're the reason that they're there cuz you know they're but they don't they they they're startled but they don't stop they don't shoot you they don't stop they don't even say anything do you they're just so panicked grug say wait they're running right by you grug say crap <laughs> keep going upstairs all right Zerosi? Keep going upstairs. <laughs> All right, so you are on the. You're in the. It's sort of the the fancy hall where the the second stairs floor. the stairs lead to on the second floor. You're in the fancy hall. There are several closed doors because the hallway is not just a rectangular, you know, hallway. There's branches to it and stuff, and several several doors that are all closed leading to other rooms. Um, however, two of those doors are open. Uh, and you can see into them from the top of the stairs. They look like they just lead to bedrooms. And then you also see, since you haven't been on the second floor before, you see that there are stairs going up to the third floor, sort of at the other end of this grand hall. And as you're as you're kind of surveying that, and you you look over there, there is a body, a soldier's body that just kind of flumps down. Looks like both arms, both legs, and his back have been just broken, mm. just physically mauled. 
because it just kind of flumps to the ground like a rag doll. Any other soldiers in here? Nope. Do I hear gunshots? Nope. Smart. What dummies. But then you hear coming from up, up above. Yeah, the third floor still. Yeah. And that guy was thrown down the stairs, you said? Thrown down the stairs from the third floor to the bottom of the stairs. I'm going to go over to the bottom of the stairs and look up to the third floor. Okay. Looking up to the third floor, you see sort of where the the stairs land on the third floor. sort of a little open area before it just leads into a regular hallway. Uh, And in that open area, you see standing there holding another limp body of a soldier. It looks like Garrett Stone, but then again, it's not. Because Garrett Stone was like five foot eleven, maybe five ten, five eleven, average build, mean looking. This guy is like probably nine or ten feet tall, and just this rippy, bulgy muscles. The clothes he was wearing are all torn. He like he went to the Incredible Hulk. Imagine right, the okay. Incredible Hulk, but instead of turning green, he just stayed the same color. Got like a little disfigured, you know, swollen in places and stuff. He looks like a monster. Does he still have pants on? Yeah, you know, just for to keep it PG. He's okay. still got like torn. His pants are all torn up, but he's still got you know around the, around the crotch area. <laughs> yeah, his pants okay. are still there. But yeah, and he's holding another limp body of a soldier. And yeah, he looks a, like a nine foot tall mutated Garrett Stone. Is he looking in our direction? Oh yeah, he's looking at the bottom. As you come around, kind of peek around and look up the stairs. He's standing at the top of the stairs at the on the landing, looking down at you. Grug says, Rossi, come shoot this thing. <laughs> Initiative. All right. Uh, I got a 25. 28. 35. Okay. So, Zerosi, you hear you hear Grug say that. What do you do? Because you don't see this. You're at the top of the stairs on this, just just got onto the second floor. Yeah. And Grug is at the bottom of the stairs, still on the second floor, but at the bottom of the stairs that lead to the third floor. I don't want to be within, like, punching range of this guy. <laughs> uh, well, none of them were shooting at it. I wonder if you could just get some shots off on it. Pull That's, some headshots. I, that'd be great if I was at the top of these stairs, and as he comes to the bottom of these stairs, <laughs> I fired shots at him. That would be great. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I'm actually going to delay because I don't want to get that close to it. So you'll you'll stay at the top of the f- stairs leading down to the first floor, but you're on the second floor at the top of the stairs with your pistol pointing at the bottom of the stairs, basically at Grug. Perfect. And uh, you're going to wait to see this thing come down and Grug going to wrestle it and you're going to shoot. All right. So with blinding speed, very much not true to the size of this thing. Duh, Grug blind. Just like way faster than it should be possible for this, this thing to move. It just jumps down the stairs using the limp body of the soldier as a club to beat you. Okay. That's a 19. All right. Uh, Grug, you need to make a current strength check. All right. Current strength is 12, I believe. Roll the three. All right. So you take five damage. This is blunt damage, so it's not like bullet damage. And are knocked... Uh, so he came down, boom, and knocked into the corner of the house, kind of like about five or eight feet back and against the wall. <laughs> okay. And it, and it lands, hits you with that, kind of looks at you, and then kind of shoots this look over at Zerosi. And I am going to t- fire. Uh, he's within 10 meters, yeah, you're but farther s- than two meters. But farther than six feet, yes. I mean, I want him to be farther than six feet. Let's <laughs> make that perfectly clear. <laughs> uh, okay. So I rolled a 13. That's a hit. And for placement, I got a one. Okay. His toe. And I got a five for damage. His toe is his weakness. Uh, his Achilles dead. toe. So you did five damage? Yeah. All right. So now we're into a new round. So I lost my turn altogether when he hit me. Correct. Oh, okay. Do I hear anything? Uh, it's it's kind of muffled because it's on the second floor on the opposite side of the house. Not his gunshot, though. Yeah, you would hear the gunshot. Okay. Okay. So Obviously, you hear a gunshot. <laughs> so then I'm going to. Uh, and all other shots had stopped for a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna climb down and try and get a vantage point from outside to shoot in. All right. 
Uh, okay, so we are going to go ahead and... And actually, with this round, I'm going to start a shootout. Okay, so that happens before initiative. So go ahead and do that. And then Grug and the Beast will roll initiative. So I'm going to fire two steady shots, needing okay. eight or less. And I rolled two 14s, both of which would have been hits on the careful shots. <laughs> so two misses. Capiche, capiche. So now let's go ahead and roll initiative. So, Grug, you kind of oh, pick yourself up, shake yourself off, and move in. So I got a 25. 19. So once again, he's going to move. Actually, nope, he's going to bound over to Zerosi. <laughs> yeah, so he, like, smashed you with the... He's still holding on to the body of the soldier that he used as a club to do that to you. And he kind of wheels around, looks at Zerosi, and just in, like, one or one and a half steps, he just kind of bounds over to you and just brings the hammer down with the with the body. Really lightning... F- well, uh, well, I rolled bad because I rolled low this time. Uh, yeah, that is a miss. So, yeah, he he brings the body down like a hammer on top of you and just misses. You, you nimbly step to the side or back. <laughs> All right. All right. So we are on to Grug. Yep. Grug. Um, all right. So Grug's going to run up and jump on his back, on this monster's back, and use his tomahawk and take a swing at his head, preferably. Shoulder, neck, Shoulder, head. Shoulder, neck, area. head. Yeah, right in that all area. Right. So, yeah, go ahead. And he's big and he's really fast, but he's also not very smart, apparently. So, yeah, you, you kind of get up and jump on him. You're pretty nimble and... You're not that small yourself, so right. so yeah. Go ahead. I'll just make you a, give you a standard roll, uh, jumping on his back and hitting him. Go ahead. You want high seventeen? That is high. So yeah, you you actually s- jump on him, grab him with your left arm, and bring your tomahawk down, and it hits sort of at the base of his neck, top of the shoulder area, and it sinks in pretty pretty solid hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Roll a d six. All right, so it sinks in, crunk, into his you know shoulder area, top of the shoulder, his right shoulder, uh, and he yells out, "Roll initiative!" He's to roll initiative, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> the number, uh, the number to beat is thirty-one. Well, I got a twenty-nine. Uh, I rolled a nineteen. Aich. Okay, so he gets to go first. Uh, with you on his back, you you know you got him with your left arm and your right arms holding the tomahawk in his shoulder. He yells. He kind of spins, throwing the throwing the body of the soldier that he's been using as a club. Uh, as he spins, he kind of throws it down at Zerosi, and he just jumps with you on his back out the window and taking part of the wall with him again. <laughs> and glass flies, wood splinters fly everywhere as he leaps out the window. And we're going to see what actually happens when he lands next week. Oh, yeah! <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. The Kool-Aid the man. The Kool-Aid man! Yeah, basically. Whichever you would like to do. <laughs> well, they just, do call you the Flash. Just accompany him up there and just shoot Stone right in the face as soon as we walk through the door. There you go. And Although then, we win. <laughs> except that you, you guys are just in that room with, and gunshots start going off. <laughs> Everybody just kind of looks at each other. Uh, Our buddy went to the bathroom. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Boy, Grug sure have to poop. Well, I ain't going to decline assistance, but... Uh, I, I, I highly recommend you you take extra car. Oh, wow. <laughs>